got this old uh, fridge body off a sort of transit sized van or sprinter um, they've cut it off the chassis and it's going to sit on the floor so we've took the um, carrier uh, system out which wasn't coping I think it's only designed to cool this little uh, area here as a partition um, they want to chill the whole area so I've got this uh, Searle TEC cooler sort of wedge shaped one um, and we're wall mounting it because the roof slopes and when you wall mount them it's the first one I've done it's quite interesting um, you get this kit of, uh, goes on there to change the airflow um, and because it's low temp there's a couple of heaters that have to go on and some baffles for the airflow and the heaters and the grill to stop you cooking your fingers uh, when it's defrosting I've noticed I've changed the motors on these they were fitting um, I think they were Elko I could be wrong um, I, I might be wrong there actually but they used these used to be plastic and I had, had a couple of them where they, they, they actually um, these legs cheered off in transit and of course you don't find that out you fit them and then you, you've got to go off the wholesalers and then go back and fit them so you end up doing two trips and you know anyway nothing about moaning um, yeah they've gone back to being metal which is much better and they're the little EC fan motors um, reliability wise I've no, no problems with these on these little units well, there's a blanking plug um, I don't know whether they've gone metric or imperial but you take, it comes in there you take it out and you're supposed to put it in there well that don't it's got to stay in there so we'll have to try and glue that in um, and luckily the, the drain fitting they supply with the evaporator will actually fit in there there's a rubber o-ring so that might have actually been a bit on the I don't know that it does fit I don't know whether they've changed the size of those. I know the bigger ones they've started putting bigger drains on there, bigger drain, drain fittings, which is a pain. Um, anyway, I'll see we get on. I might that might be it, or I might I might video the rest of what we're doing. I've had to run the tap through there. It's uh, an M5 metric thread. Um, Pretty much every one of these you get some in the factories managed to chew one of the threads up somewhere. Um, that one was tight coming out. Um, that one was tight coming out but it, it went in okay. That was tight and um, that was tight so we're running, they, these are M4, these are 4 millimeters. so we're running it a 4 mil tap through and clean, cleaning them out as well while we're at it. Um, yeah, we need to work on that. Right, well, it's got one heater goes by the coil, um, which is that one there, and you feed the two wires, there's a wonder what them holes were for, now I know. You feed the wires through them holes, they've got some either end, but we'll go in this end, because the expansion rail's got to go down there. Um, feed the wires through, and then you get these little clips that uh, hook in under the pipe, one of the coils. And then just uh, pop in over there just to hold it in place. So that's that one. And then the other one is uh, that one there is sandwiched between that and that. And then you've got some little wing nuts. And they go on these studs, I think, which I think are M4. Um, I think some of this, where the screws are a bit iffy, is um, where the powder coating might have got in the hole. So probably you don't have to run a tap in and out just to clean the paint out of the out of the threads if you've got one. Right, let's have a go at this one. 
Right, I've had some fun trying to figure out how this, this went in there. Because um, you'd think it'd be fairly obvious. Um, the little picture's not... If you know how, how it goes, it, it's obvious, but it's, it's not very clear. Um, so they sort of show... That looks like you're using the top holes, which are these ones, for the studs. But if, you, if you do that, the angle, the angle's all wrong, and then there's no way that would clamp on there properly. So what I think you're actually meant to do is put that like that. That actually looks like it fits better. And that goes on there. I'm not actually heat this pan up, but actually I'm not, I'm not sure we actually need the, that heater in there because we're, we're not running it as a freezer, so it's just a chiller. But um, we'll put it in because um, we've got it. And I'm, I'm not sure whether we'll actually. Uh, I suppose it all, all heat rises, doesn't it? It's going to add to that. Um, it's probably not going to need many defrosts anyway. Anyway, well, right. We'll put it in there and then make our minds up, I think. Okay, I've got that heater in there. How I think it should go. Um, so we'll baffle in the back. The heat is sandwiched with that other little plate. Um, there was a knockout there, so I've, I've knocked that out and put the two wires through there. Because other, other than poking them up behind the coil or through there, I think they'd melt. We'll put, put a bush in there as well. A little, little cable tie and we'll them out of the way. I think there's some little clips actually. I think that clips in through one of these holes. So you can, you can route your wires into that box away from everything. And then we've got these four little clips which I think go in there. Four screws and four washers for the grill, which is here. So that'll, that'll sit on there like that. And put that drain fitting in before you put the heaters in because you can't. Uh, you won't get in there but afterwards. So I think it's going to be a tidy little unit once it's done. Evaporated on the wall. Um, you don't, it's level, but the, the, the uh, cauldron isn't. So we've put this in level so it'll drain. Uh, I've got this expansion valve there. Um, I've marked on there where the fans are, so we've tried to keep everything out of the way. So fans down there. Um, Solenoid, I've put a bolt through there, keep it in place. And then we've used the existing hole for the pipe work. Okay, pipe will come out the back there and down into the unit. I need another clip for that, I've run out of clips. Um, put this frame in there, that's on the old chassis. Um, and then I've bolted it at the top where the old unit used to sit. We have this. Uh, Carrier, I think it is. Unit at the top there. So we've used the old bolt, uh, bolt holes. So that's, that's stopping it pulling out, out this way. And then the weight is just sat on the chassis. Um, I've got another bar below it here because I'm going to run a, a diagonal up to brace that because it's a bit, a bit bouncy. Um, and I've, I've left that sort of, I'd probably clipped it a bit lower down, but I've just left that a bit, so it's got a bit of movement in it. Um, that's the, uh, so, um, Unite Winces 
unit or Tecumseh which are in the States. A nice little unit so they come ready fitted to dry a sight glass contactor pressure switch. I've put the uh, fan speed control on there. I've had it on pressure test for a bit. Um, it's lost a little, it's lost uh, 1.7 psi but that was before I put the magnet on the solenoid and it stayed uh, uh, must be over a, it's two hours ten minutes that's been on so it's um, an hour and 50 minutes and it's not dropped since we've been around it with a leak detector I've put trace gas in there so we've checked all our braze joints and uh, all these connections on here we're just about to get the vac pump going Right, I've got all this wired. Um, it's not it's not a setup from the factory to have defrost heaters, so they, they give you another little terminal block to terminate them in. But I've, I've just used the little Wago terminals. We've picked a neutral up off of there. Um, that's actually it's 1.5 mil cable, but it's it's got really thin insulation on it. It's different grade to normal flex, so it looks thinner than it is. Um, so that's all done. I've put the box in here because obviously there's nowhere outside to put it dry and I've, I've done all these with um, cable glands I've got a silicon in this one just to try and keep this box dry because uh, otherwise if you if you run a bit of conduit out of this um, to in here it, this will fill up with water eventually because it will get condensation on the inside especially if you run a tube outside to the outdoor unit um, a cable running through there to the outdoor unit. So anyway, that's the idea with this. I'd normally put it in conduit because it's neater, but uh, we're just working with what we've got really. So I've got to put the uh, put the cover on with the fans. Wire the fans into here. Um, four screws around the edges. Uh, there's a plate to go on here to stop you touching the defrost heaters when it's um, defrosting. Put that on, and then I've got to run the drain down. But we've got luckily we've got a hole in the floor where the old pipes went out, so I've just got to run a. Um, I just run a line down there with a level, and of course it was going off on the off on the tangent because the uh, room's not uh, level. <laughs> so. Uh, to rub that off, do that again. Um, so yeah, we've got the drain to do, a bit of wiring outside. Let's see if it works. That's the old, uh, that's where the old evaporator was hung. Uh, I could show you the slope on the ceiling. Um, right, they're a pain in the ass um, when they're on the wall. Um, We've had to prop it up in the box and then get underneath and make all the connections off in there. Oh, I've got to do some of this yet. I might have to see if I can glue that in with a bit of silicon because they've changed the size of the hole between... They've obviously changed the design of this but not changed the design of that, I would say. Well, it's still raining here. It's been on back for a while. Um, it's down to 370 with the puppet shot off. So uh, it's pretty good. We're aware about one and a half kilos in. Get it all in because the solenoid's shut at the moment. Let me see if we get the quick go through there. Oh, probably do it. 
do. It's enough to run it. Right, just fired that up. Uh, fans come on, some lights on. There's a really good airflow out there. You don't realise how much air these things move when they're up on the ceiling. So I don't think that's, I can still feel that here. That's not going to be a problem with that little partition there, but they want to minimum take the door off. That's uh, got a door, basically. I think this was only meant to be the little chilled area, and this was like the ambient produce, it's like a little home delivery body for a supermarket. Right, let's go see what the compressor's doing. Right, compressor's on. Sure what the fan speed control is set to cut in at. Um, I've put the cut off one, I've put min minimum speed ones on these before and they've still been not slow enough in the winter. There we go, it's just come at 200 pounds and the fan's just started moving. So that's condensing temp around 34, probably about right. Yeah, heating air full side glass. And we put 1.3 kilos in, I think. Yeah, that. Here we go. Let it run for five or ten minutes to see. The box is really warm at the moment. It's about 17, and I think it must be there about three. so it will run uh, long enough that we can sort of make sure it's running okay and then um, I'm surprised how much water 